Hello and welcome to the Cleaning Matters podcast, sponsored by the Facilities Event. My name is Chris Shaw and I'm the editor of Cleaning Matters magazine. In this podcast, we'll be examining all aspects of cleaning and hygiene across a broad range of sectors with a number of industry experts. In this episode, we're joined by Dr. Victoria Wagner, who is Director of Technical Services and Training Institutional Europe at Ecolab. Hello. Hello. Thanks very much for joining us today. First of all, I mean, tell us about your role within Ecolab and perhaps how this has changed since the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Sure. Um, so as Elise already said, uh, my name is Victoria Wagner. I'm now eight years with Ecolab and more than 10 years in the hygiene industry. And my role is to lead the training and tech with team across Europe. Um, and in this role, we are really the hygiene partners for our customers, focusing on the B2B customers. Um, and of course, uh, during the last couple of months, our role has changed. So we've conducted, for example, more than 70 webinars with more than 8,000 customers uh, that attended our hygiene webinars. Uh, and with this hygiene uh, webinars, we could really support our customers in really coping with this pandemic. Yeah, what, what has the reaction been so far? The reaction so far has been really brilliant. Um, we usually did around 60 minute presentation and Q&A session and the customers, they really appreciated this Q&A session because there was a lot of, and there still is a lot of insecurity concerning uh, the pandemic. We do not know everything yet. We are getting better and this, we, I mean, really the scientists behind. Um, and there are many questions that our customers have and that we help them to answer them to really cope with the current situation. What, what kind of questions are you being asked? The main questions that we are being asked, how can I really reopen my site? Is it a hotel? Is it a, a, a restaurant? What can I do? What do I need to do uh, when it comes really to keep my guests safe? Because at the end, we're talking about the end consumers. And we want to keep them safe. And there are many different uh, measures that can be done. Um, and it's not just really the hygiene measures itself that really uh, try to keep everything clean. It's also really establishing the trust or re-establishing the trust with your end consumers and your guests. And it's really very critical and important. Indeed, yes. I mean, it, it must also be a challenge, apart from getting customers involved, but having employees uh, reassuring them. Yes. Uh, Especially, so when it comes to employees, there are two sides. On the one side, it's really what Ecolab does with our own employees. And uh, that's where really I need to say Ecolab has done a fantastic job from the very first moment, really training the staff. Uh, and this has also been uh, supported by my team, of course, uh, but also in keeping the employees safe. So we had immediately uh, the uh, re remote working rules in place. We were equipped with uh, face masks, with disinfectants, and that's really brilliant that uh, a company like eClub cares for their own employees. But in addition, we also, of course, uh, support our customers uh, to help their employees. So there are many different things in place that they need to keep in mind. And I think one of the first steps is really besides really equipping them with all the hygiene products they need to train them properly. Really to now reinforce training across all the different uh, hygiene steps. Have you noticed a change in attitudes towards training? Uh, yes, I have. Um, honestly, I've seen that really um, people are much more open to trainings and it's on the one hand, that they're really curious to learn more about, of course, the pandemic, but also about other topics. Um, and what has uh, also changed due to the lockdown in so many countries, the method has changed. So we see really uh, now many uh, people, many customers going away from the typical classroom approach, training on site to really an online training. This can be like we did with really a, a webinar, but it can also be like an e-learning. So there are many different training measures now, very uh, modern, 
And it seems as also the customs and also uh, we have changed a little bit and we are now due to this pandemic adapting more easily uh, to these uh, new training methods. But that's important to say, uh, not everything can be trained online. That's something really we, I need to say. Um, there are certain things you need to train in a practical environment. If you really want to show how to clean properly a surface, of course you can give the basics in an online training, but it will never ever completely uh, yeah, be the only method to train because you really need also to train on site, especially also when it comes to technical uh, content. Yes, so I was going to say, this approach that you're taking at the moment, is this a temporary measure or will this be something that you'll continue after the, you know, hopefully the pandemic's over? I mean, that also depends on uh, what our customers at the end want, and what they are asking for. So we usually try as much as possible to adapt our offering according to customer needs. Uh, that's very important. Um, what we've seen so far, there was really a great feedback coming uh, from the first webinars. And now it really depends on the next steps, what will be. We also saw during the reopening, the customers, especially in the uh, hotel and restaurant environment, they were so busy at the end, uh, so that after the lockdown, we had less uh, customers attending the webinars for a good reason. I mean, if you need to really reopen, uh, then it's pretty clear uh, that you do not have the time. That's why we nevertheless recorded all our sessions and they can be found on our eclub.com page. So if we really in the evening customers have time, we, they can easily have a look at it. And that's also changing at the moment that you really transfer certain content also to the .com page and uh, give this knowledge to our customers. Um, we expect that there will nevertheless uh, an increased need for any kind of online offerings. Um, but as I said, it really depends uh, what the customers are asking for. And that's what we currently try also to define. We will offer for sure some more content, uh, but all is linked to the needs of the customers. And has, has your approach differed across sectors? So say hospitality uh, industry is going to have different demands to say healthcare how do you did you apply across the board or do you do it per sector yes so so this depends as e club we really uh uh support all the different segments so from the food retail industry over to the food service industry restaurants hotels long-term care and hospitals um i personally need to say my focus is mainly on really restaurants on hotels and on long-term care, not so much on hospitals and uh, also not on the uh, food plants and also food uh, retail. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we really train everyone. So that's standard by some of my colleagues. Um, we see that really, especially in the area of hospitals, that people are a little bit more focused. So people working in a hospital they already know a little bit more. They get their own trainings. There are experts there. They have really people uh, working in a hygiene environment. Um, so they have different point of knowledge. And it's not meant in a mean way. That's just uh, uh, depending on their role. So they're reading anyhow their studies on their own. Nevertheless, we support them if needed. Uh, and we su support, and that's also important to understand, the people who are cleaning a hospital. So the building service contractors who go into the hospitals, for them, that's not easy. It's really a tricky situation. Also not always in the same hospital, jumping to different sites. And this is really, these are the people we really need to train, to focus on. And what we also find out that we need to adapt the training in an easy way. It cannot be too complicated because it needs to be easy to understand also from the wording and that's also sometimes a challenge for me as I really, as I'm a scientist and I've got a PhD in food chemistry, I need to, to find a way to really keep it simple. Yes. Yeah. So I think from the, from the UK perspective, um, particularly in the hospitality sector, there have been a lot of confusing messages in the UK, which has made it very difficult 
uh, to establish what one can or what one can't do. Tell us about the your experience, the European approach uh, to this, and perhaps what the UK could learn from this. Yeah, honestly, it has been across Europe uh, not so easy to find out what's necessary. And that's why I usually tend to say um, what's important to really get in touch with a local health authority, because they usually know it the best and they can give it the latest guidance. That's very critical um, at the moment. And that's not because uh, somebody wants to trick and whatever uh, their uh, consumers, the customers, uh, the uh, population know. Um, it's really that we do not know at the moment uh, what the virus is about. So we still find out what the virus is really, uh, how it's acting, uh, how we can really um, properly uh, cope with the virus. So there are many studies ongoing. That's just the background information. Um, nevertheless, there are really some uh, things that work across the globe, that work across all industry, and especially also for hotels. Um, the first thing is really social distancing. Even if it's very hard for us, it's really one of the most critical things in order to fight COVID-19. Besides, where this is not possible, it's really wearing face mask. And I know it's not very comfortable to wear a face mask the whole day, but it really helps you a lot in coping with the virus. Uh, another thing, especially for people, and think about the people working in the hotel at the reception, is really the acrylic glass barriers. Because this really protects you from the virus, it's a barrier, then you can also take off your face mask, you will keep safe. Um, and uh, what I also like a lot is really the hand disinfectants at the entrance. It can be at the entrance of the hotel, at the entrance of the restaurant. Um, makes totally sense. And it's also, I mean, it creates the awareness for people to disinfect their hand, but also shows to the guests, oh, wow, they care. They care and they, it helps you to really uh, reestablish trust. And what I also need to say, it's important to increase the cleaning and disinfectant frequency especially if the hydrate surfaces. You just keep on thinking all the different surfaces you touch during the day. And when you're a guest in a hotel, think about the, the room cuts, the doorknobs, uh, the switches. There are so many different uh, high touch surfaces that need to really be cleaned and disinfected properly. And that, of course, makes me also feel more comfortable as a guest. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, what would your advice be to, uh, say, a catering manager or a facilities manager who may be unsure about tackling all of the issues and, um, you know, problems with employees returning to work and looking out for stuff? Because ultimately, it's a, it, it could shut the business down if they, you know, they don't tackle it correctly. Right. So uh, that's a fair point. So if you're really now in the situation that your uh, employees are coming back, and you need to, you want to reopen, and you need, of course, because it's also linked to the financial uh, financials you need to have. At the end, you want to earn money. Um, the first thing, I, and I need to say it again: follow the local public health recommendations. That's really critical. Uh, then I also need to mention it again: focus on training and ed education. So really support your employees during this uh, uh, difficult period, and which also is important, you are not alone. So really reach out to your supplier, to your hygiene supplier, and ask for support. We are here to help you. And it's not just eClub, there are also many other companies, but really try to reach out and ask for support. And everybody's really willing to support in this case. Um, and uh, also reinforce the personal hygiene. That's so important. So really the hand, the cuff etiquette. Um, and you as an uh, employer provide enough hygiene materials. And I know at the beginning it was very hard to have enough materials provided because demand was rising by so many percentages. It was so hard to cope with this high demand. Uh, but it should at the moment be okay or getting better to really provide with hygiene materials such as soap, alcohol-based hand drops, and disinfectants. That's really critical. Um, and reinforce especially the training to disinfect the surfaces, as already mentioned, high-touch objects with an approved disinfectant. 
that's also important that you need to use a disinfectant that's effective against the virus. Um, that's not too difficult because we know nowadays that it's quite easy to kill, but just have a look and use a proper disinfectant. Um, what you can also consider, for example, this always depends, of course, on the hotel to close non-essential public gathering areas. It's really up to you if you really focus on social distancing, if possible. Or if you say, oh, the risk is too high, I, I'm rather close to something like the bar, the fitness center, or the pool. So that's something that's really up to you and, of, of course, to your side, what makes sense to you. If you're not uh, closing it, it really makes sense. Focus again on the hygiene rules, as I said before, wearing masks, uh, social distancing, hand disinfectants, and also, of course, cleaning the hydrogen objects. Um, you can also consider when it comes to serving foods, uh, for example, in the morning for the breakfast, do I really need to offer a buffet? Or is there a way to serve food? And there are very creative ideas how many hotels are doing this. For example, just asking in the evening, you fill out a form and you get exactly what you would usually take from the buffet in the morning on your table. So that's really convenient. And I even tried it on my own. I need to say many hotels are well prepared. <laughs> so, Dr. Victoria Wagner, thank you so much for this. Um, what I, I'd like to end really in, in terms of hygiene going forward, what can we learn from this global pandemic? And I'm also thinking of antimicrobial resistance, which has kind of been swept under the carpet, really. Um, but, you know, that we're still going to face issues with that going forward. So what what can we learn? I mean, what we can learn, I think that for many years we have always been uh, teaching <laughs> our customers to take any kind of uh, microbe serious. And I'm not just talking about viruses, it's really all the different microbes that are around. We always have said, take it serious. It can easily uh, come to an outbreak and might be salmonella, might be any other kind of outbreak, norovirus, for example. So that's something that we really tend to teach all the time. And honestly, many of the customers are taking it serious already, but for the smaller amount, it probably have not yet. I think they just learn to really do it. Um, so that's one of the big learnings. But I nevertheless need to say at the moment, we just talk about coronavirus at the moment, about COVID-19, which is really, uh, uh, yeah, what you get by uh, transmission of SARS-CoV-2. That's how the virus is called. And we need to have in mind there are many other microbes that are also important. So it's not enough to just have a disinfectant in place that's really effective against uh, SARS-CoV-2. No, you also need to have proper hygiene measures in place to really uh, kill salmonella and norovirus and whatever. So that's what people tend to mix up at the moment. Uh, really have a look at the proper hygiene in all of the different steps. So especially when it comes to the food safety in kitchens. Uh, you need to comply with the good hygiene practice. And even better if you have a HACCP system uh, implemented in your site. But that's very critical at the moment, not to forget about, forget about the other uh, microbes that might be around. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Victoria Wagner. It's much appreciated. To find out more, uh, please visit our website, cleaning-matters.co.uk. But for now, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It was really a pleasure. Thanks for having me here.